Hey, you complete idiot. Take a good look at the mess you've created. Seriously, when are you gonna stop being such a screw up? It's beyond frustrating dealing with someone as useless as you. Huh? What are you talking about? What did I do now that's so wrong in your eyes? Can you enlighten me, please? Obviously, I'm referring to your brilliant move of cheaping out on my mom's birthday present. You never cease to amaze me with your utter uselessness, you know that. Did I not give you clear instructions that even a toddler could follow? Or is basic comprehension too much to ask from you? What's this all about? Out of the blue like this? I have no idea what's going on here. Oh, I did give your mom a birthday gift. If you're so concerned, go ahead and ask her about it. She'll confirm it for you. Oh, for real? You seriously have no clue what I'm talking about? Wow. Just wow. It's beyond belief how utterly useless you are. Let me refresh your memory, Einstein. It's about mom's birthday gift. I specifically asked you to get something special for her. Something she would actually appreciate. And what did you do? You handed her a lousy card with cash inside. Bravo, genius. And what's the big deal? I put $500 in a lovely birthday card and gave it to her. She really appreciated the gesture. Oh, please. Talk about half-assing it. It was her 62nd birthday, and all you could come up with was a lousy card and some cash? You clearly couldn't be bothered to put in any effort or thought into it, could you? It's downright pathetic. I specifically told you to get something special, but I guess the concept of special is just too complex for you to grasp. Okay, Terry. I hear you and I understand your perspective. But you know what? She actually told me that she preferred the money over something like flowers or whatever. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, she definitely said that. Besides, she's running out of ideas for presents and thinks that simplicity is the way to go. I even had a little chat with your dad. And he pretty much echoed your mom's sentiments. I asked him if there was something special your mom had her eye on, but he told me they appreciated the thought Yet the money would be the best gift. Oh, really? That doesn't sound like him at all. Are you sure he actually said that? It's hard to believe that he would stoop so low and suggest something like that. Even before you brought up her birthday, I actually sent them flowers once. And let me tell you, they weren't exactly thrilled about it. I could tell by their reactions. When you send a big bouquet like that, they have to find a vase or buy one themselves. And it becomes a hassle. They end up spending their own money on it. So, yeah. Seriously, that's ridiculous. So, I brainstormed some other ideas, like a coupon for dinner at their favorite restaurant. But it wasn't the answer either. They actually told me that these days, they prefer eating at home for safety and overall health reasons. If we were all to go out and get something fancy like plane tickets or cruise ship tickets, your mom's health issues wouldn't allow her to travel far from the country. So, instead of stressing over all those things, they simply said cash is the way to go. Just like your dad said, keeping it simple with cash is the best option. Oh, but cash is just the epitome of thoughtlessness and impersonality, isn't it? I mean, seriously, you couldn't come up with anything better than that. I was actually counting on you to think of something more meaningful. Mom and dad should be utterly disappointed with such a lackluster cash gift. Way to let everyone down. Not at all. They were genuinely thrilled with it, I promise. You should have seen their faces. They were beaming. And remember, they were the ones who actually suggested it in the first place. So... No way. That just doesn't sound like them. Well, it's honestly the truth. They actually expressed concern about my health too. That's another reason why they preferred cash. Because it's simple and easy. They even told me, just wishing mom a happy birthday is enough. You're pregnant and have a lot going on. You shouldn't be stressing over getting gifts for your in-laws. It's not a top priority. They genuinely appreciate cash as a wonderful gift and assured me they'll put it to good use. So it's kind of ridiculous that you're mad at me over this. Your parents certainly aren't. Don't get snarky with me. Let me spell it out for you since you seem incapable of understanding. 
The real issue here is that you either couldn't or simply wouldn't make the effort to choose a thoughtful gift for my mom. That's all it boils down to. So don't try to act all high and mighty just because they were polite to you when you handed them some cash. That doesn't change the fact that you dropped the ball on this one. What? Why are you twisting everything around and trying to paint me as the bad guy here? That's not fair. Oh, it's crystal clear that they were just trying to be nice to you when they said all that. Obviously, you should know this already. Let's face the truth here. Giving cash as a birthday present is the epitome of laziness and thoughtlessness. It's the lowest of the low. Just because she claimed that's what she wanted doesn't change that fact. So don't you dare take that smug tone with me. Watch your step, Miss High and Mighty. You're treading on thin ice. Wow. Where did that come from? What's wrong with you? Wow. You're really showing your true colors as a lousy spouse. Frankly, I'm shocked by your despicable attitude. I can't help but wonder what kind of mother you'll turn out to be. I'm honestly terrified to find out. Just picturing a child being born into the care of such a thoughtless and careless mother, it's heartbreaking. My sympathies go out to that poor kid. Wow, Terry. You're really getting worked up over this. Can you please calm down a bit? I don't understand why you're making such a massive fuss about it. All I did was give your mom the exact gift she said she wanted. Before giving it to her, I double checked with her directly and even spoke to your dad about it. Oh, and just so you know, that $500 came from my own savings. In case you're interested in the details. Oh, so now you think that changes everything. Your money is my money, and you should have known that by now. Who cares if it was all from you or from me? It's all the same in the end. Who cares? Excuse me? Are you serious? Ah, great. Now I have to clean up the mess you've made. I'll have to apologize to my folks for this disaster. And guess what? You'd better do the same. Are you listening? You need to apologize to them for being such a terrible wife to me and a lousy daughter-in-law to them. It's the least you can do after all the trouble you've caused. I got a call from Terry just now. I feel really bad about what he told me, Nora. Really bad. He said you two are in a fight now because of us? Is that true? Exactly what did he say? I bet he gave you an earful. He actually said, sorry, Nora got such a lousy present for mom. He believes you didn't put any thought or effort into it whatsoever. I tried to explain that you simply gave her what she asked for. But he just snapped back with something like, You don't need to lie to protect her. I tried to reason with him, but he wouldn't listen. It frustrates me when he gets like this. I genuinely apologize, Nora. I'm sorry that my son can be so stubborn. I'll continue trying to talk some sense into him. No, no, it's fine. I should have thought about it more before I did it. I didn't consider his side of it. Cash as a gift actually isn't very creative or thoughtful, so I do apologize for that, Richard. I really could have done a better job with all this, so please forgive me. What? There's nothing that you should be apologizing for. Not at all. That's nonsense. Caroline was really happy with the gift. She said so, and I know it's true. She prefers to be able to decide how to spend it and what she'll get. She's always been that way. She prefers cash. If that's really the case, that's great. But the way Terry talks, it's like he doesn't know his mom at all. It kind of makes me wonder. But enough about this. More importantly, isn't your own celebration the next one we'll be doing? I think it is. <laughs> Caroline's birthday is over now. So let's think about the next special occasion. And it's going to be a really special one. My celebration? What do you mean? You lost me there. I mean your baby, silly. Its arrival is going to be the next thing we celebrate. How are you feeling? How's that tummy doing? Everything going according to schedule? Caroline's driving me nuts, always telling me to check up on you and how you're doing. It's like she's pregnant too. Thank you so much to both of you for being so concerned. I'm truly grateful for it. I'm in good health and so is the baby. Everything looks just fine. 
The doctor said we're good to go. Things should go according to schedule and the baby should come next month, God willing. So fingers crossed. That's great to hear. We can't wait. You must let us know if there's anything we can do in the meantime, okay? Once the baby's here and things settle down a bit, you'll have to let us celebrate with you and Terry. We can't wait to celebrate both you and the baby as a family. It'll be your turn soon enough. That's so sweet. Thank you so much, Richard. It means a lot. Pay no attention to Terry. He's a bit high-strung sometimes. It's commendable that you want to please us, his parents, of course. But we know that the buck was passed to you on this whole birthday present situation. Don't worry, we know what's going on. So until the happy package arrives, take it easy and get your rest. We're thinking of you. Yes, I will certainly do that. I'm feeling pretty tuckered out right now, to be honest. I think it's nap time. Thank you so much for everything, always. Harry, why are you being so unreasonable? This is ridiculous. Let me in the house right now. Why are you suddenly kicking me out? What the hell are you doing? What did you expect would happen, dummy? You've got a lot of nerve embarrassing me like that. Once again, totally thoughtless actions by you. What the hell made you so angry this time? You lost your temper all of a sudden and threw all the finger foods on the ceiling. Then you grabbed me by the arm and threw me out of the house. What's this all about? Exactly what are you trying to do? Let me in. Keep quiet, dummy. You've got a lot of nerve serving those cheap finger foods to my parents. You're my wife, and the guests you're entertaining are my parents. Look at it from my point of view. It looks terrible. What do you mean, cheap finger foods? They aren't cheap. And yeah, I know your folks are here to celebrate our baby's arrival. I prepared everything, left it in the kitchen, ready to serve when they got here. I had plates and drinks and everything all set up for them. And you threw everything all over the kitchen? Why? That was so cruel. What are you doing? Don't try and play the victim after trying to foist that low quality food on my parents. Especially after they've come all the way over here to celebrate the baby with us. I told you to properly prepare so that we could entertain them, didn't I? Those were the instructions, and they were perfectly clear, weren't they? And you went and got these cut-rate nasty low-quality finger foods. I mean, seriously. Why do you have to talk like that? Why are you getting so upset? They all looked perfectly delicious to me. I was looking forward to eating them. What's wrong with you? Do you honestly believe that something so cheap could actually taste good? I thought you had better taste than that, Nora. Seriously, is there something wrong with your eyes? Should I schedule an appointment with an optometrist for you? Because your judgment seems to be seriously off. What are you talking about? Stop being so sarcastic and mean. I mean, everything on the platter is the same unappetizing color and none of it looks fresh. It all just looks low quality and disgusting, shameful. It's obvious that you bought them at some cheap supermarket or something like that, am I right? I could just tell by looking at them. No way they were going to be any good. Garbage. You better take that back. You'll regret saying that, I promise you. You've got some nerve talking like that. Be quiet, dummy. I'll say what I want. I'm the husband. You've got no standing to criticize me when you couldn't even prepare to entertain my folks properly. Honestly, wives like you need to be strictly disciplined and made to reflect on their shortcomings. So today, you can spend the day reflecting and you can do it outside, by yourself. Quit screwing around. This isn't a game, Terry. Who's going to look after the baby if I'm stuck outside? You? Your parents will be here soon. Come on, let me in so that I can at least clean up the mess you made before they got here. Don't worry, we'll be fine without you. My folks just want to see their grandchild, and he's right here with me, waiting for them. It doesn't matter whether you're here or not, Nora. You don't matter. 
Besides, my mom is way better at taking care of babies than you are. Trust me on this. Yeah, we'll be just fine without you. Enjoy the weather and think about your actions today. You're lying. Quit playing sadistic games with me, Terry. What do you plan to do? Yeah, we're going to order some really good steaks and lobster on your credit card, Nora. So you can just take a hike. Just go out for the day and don't come back. We'll enjoy our time together without you. What the hell are you thinking? I'm part of this family too. This is completely insane. Have you lost your mind? What's insane about it? I'm perfectly sane and you know I don't do drugs of any kind. You've got a lot of work to do before you're a decent wife, so I'm educating you, Nora. I mean, my parents are coming all the way to see us and the baby. And you serve them this crappy food? I think you're the one who's insane. Actually, I'm the one who chose the finger food, son. Huh? Dad? Yeah, sorry, the finger foods are so cheap that they made you question my sanity. I guess there's no accounting for taste. Your mom and I found a nice little shop that had a good selection of stuff and good prices. That's where we ordered from. Hang on a second. You better not be messing with me, Nora. Is that really you, Dad? That's right, son. It's me, your dad, who came a long way in a hurry to celebrate Nora giving birth to your son. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. Nora is the guest of honor at this celebration. She literally risked her life so that we can be celebrating your new baby. So we ordered only things that she likes to eat. Those finger foods were ordered by your mom and me, for Nora. That's why everything was the same color. Nora has a certain taste, as we just found out. We made sure to ask her beforehand if there's anything in particular that she would like to eat, and that's what's on the platters. What the hell is going on? Why are you showing up in this WhatsApp conversation anyway? Something weird is going on here. You're the weird one, son. What are you even doing anyway? What the hell are you thinking? Throwing your wife out of the house right after she's given birth? Are you high? The first thing we saw when we got here was Nora clutching her phone and crying. We asked her what's wrong, and she let us read the entire conversation. What? Are you saying that you're already here? Out in front, right now? Yeah, we wanted to see our beautiful grandson. We've been looking forward to it for weeks, so we got here a bit earlier than we said we would. But we were so excited, we forgot to get a present for you. So we came and dropped off the finger foods first and then went back home. You were fast asleep during all of this, so you wouldn't know. Seriously, I don't believe it. Are you saying this just to protect Nora? We know that the period right after giving birth is tough on the mother, especially first-time mothers. So we wanted to avoid giving Nora any more to deal with. And that's why we got the finger foods ourselves and brought them over. But now, it looks like you've gone and thrown them all on the ceiling? Not helpful, son. Not helpful at all. Your mom and I put a lot of thought into picking those out and putting that order together for us to enjoy. I gotta say, you really know how to screw things up, son. Uh, th that was... I didn't mean to. Yeah. So today's celebration is cancelled, obviously. We're taking Nora back to our place, right this minute. What? No, don't do that! Yes, and we'll come back for the baby later today, too. So gather up his toys and stuff, and make sure he's ready by then. Got it? Wait a minute. How come you want to take both Nora and the baby? Judging by the way you've treated Nora, you can't be trusted with the baby either. Furthermore, we have no intention of making Nora and the baby stay with such a bad father as you. So, you will live separately from them for the time being. It's the most sane thing to do, because you obviously aren't sane at the moment, son. What? Wait, you can't do that! I'll... I'll eat all the stuff I threw on the ceiling. And I'll get replacement ones for you all to eat. I'll get them right now. So please, don't start talking about us living separately, okay? Shut up, idiot! Don't you see how serious this is? You can go ahead and eat the ceiling finger foods by yourself and reflect on just how stupid your actions have been. 
You've got some serious reflecting to do, son. Wait, Dad, please. Hey, Nora. Are you there? This has gone far enough. Come back home. Please. When are you gonna forgive me? I'm better now. So please forgive me. Hmm? Did you say something? Yeah, it's been two weeks since all that happened with the finger foods and stuff. I thought a lot about my actions. And I see that I was wrong. So please, come back, okay? You gotta admit, it's weird for a married couple not to be living together. Let's not be that couple, okay? You're the one who made things this way, Terry. It's all on you. I don't really want to go back to the person who threw my finger foods all over the kitchen, kicked me out of the house, and called me stupid over and over. And I don't want a son living with a father who would do such things. I'm afraid for his safety, Terry. I mean, if you did that to me, what would you do to him when you got upset? Don't say that, Nora. It'll never happen again. I took responsibility for the finger foods and ate them all myself. Really, off the floor. And I mean, I ate all of them. As in four people's worth. I did it as penance for my stupidity. So I'm begging you, please, come back. I can't take living without you and our son. Hmm. It looks like you really have reflected on your actions. That's encouraging. Yeah, yeah, I really have. I mean, without you around, I don't know where anything is. I can't cook good food and the place is a mess. I just can't handle this all on my own. Huh? Did I hear you right? You can't take it? That's all you have to say? Not, I need to see the baby, or I miss your laugh, or anything like that? Well, of course. All that stuff too. But more than that, it's about my quality of life. What? That's all you care about? Wait, what? Why are you saying all of this? Look, if I can't handle everything, I have to work to make ends meet. If I can't work, then we're all in trouble, including you and the baby. Do you really want us to end up on the street? Take a moment to think about it. I know you don't want that to happen. It's important that you come home soon. All this time has passed and you're still only talking and thinking about yourself. It's really almost unbelievable. I don't think you're reflected at all. Very disappointing. Shut up. It's time for you to come home. Families are supposed to live together. I'll do anything to live together with you and the baby. I'll even do some of the housework and child rearing, so come home. Okay. Let's live together with my parents then. Uh... What? You said you'll do anything, right? You said you want to live together, right? So get your things together and come to my parents' place. We can all live together as a family. Wait a minute. What do you mean come to my parents' place? Aren't you at my parents' place? Haven't you been staying with my mom and dad? Yeah, I was for a few days. But after that, they took me back to my own folks' place. They figured that I'd be more comfortable with my own family. It seems like they also talked to my parents at some point without telling me. What? Wow. Well, you know, my folks are just in the next town over from yours, so... Your folks have been coming over here pretty regularly to say hello and to see their grandson. <laughs> you can't be serious. Wow. All this time, I was sure that you were with my folks. So, back to this living together topic. You're saying that you want to live with me and our son, so... I have one condition, and that's the, that we live together at my parents' place. If you agree to that, then pack your stuff and come over here. That's... You've got to give me some time. I've never heard of a couple living together with the wife's parents. If we're going to do that, at least let's do it at my parents' place. It's not that unusual at all for a couple to live with the wife's family. Not unusual at all. But come on. As a husband, it's a matter of pride. Oh, really? Then that leaves us with divorce as the only option, my stupid son. Then quit wasting time and divorce her, dumbass. Dad, you again? Now why are you on her phone? We just happen to be here visiting today. Son, you really are a selfish idiot. 
So much so that your mom and I are wondering what we did wrong when we raised you. What? Stop it. But you really think that, don't you? The husband is the lord of the house. How am I supposed to be that in my wife's parents' house? This just isn't going to work. Actually, we're the ones who came up with that condition, son. And if you can't meet the condition, then there's no longer any choice but divorce. What? You're telling me that that was you? All this is your doing? Yeah, because we knew that if you lived together with us, you'd still be doing the same things without fear of repercussions. So living with Nora's folks strikes the right balance. Quit messing with me. Why are you guys totally taking her side in all of this? I'm your son. Yeah, you're our son. But ever since you married her, Nora is our daughter too. We intend to deal with and treat you both as equals. What? And our daughter has been having a hard time. So of course we took her home to her parents. It was a foregone conclusion. And your re-education by having to live with her and her parents was also a foregone conclusion. What the? Your task now is to relearn who and what are truly important and to never forget that again. So let us know once you've packed your bags. We'll make sure you get to Nora's folks place without any more precious time wasted. Reluctantly, Terry agreed to move into my parents' house, as getting a divorce was the last thing he wanted. Here, he quickly realized that he couldn't assert his authority as the man of the house. So he took the initiative to help with housework and caring for the baby. On weekends, his parents visit to see the baby and check up on their son. Their usual questions include, any recent developments? Is there anything we need to talk to our foolish son about? It's evident that they genuinely care about me. And as a result, my postnatal recovery has been far less stressful. I'm truly grateful to Richard and Caroline because without their support, I would have been left with the options of either divorcing Terry and raising our baby on my own, or staying with Terry and enduring the same suffering as before.